have a chance to win the king's favor. We control Shargat's soul. We control the whole of Southern Africa. That's the game, isn't it? We have every reason to believe that Sharka has been murdered. Very good. One miserable report tells you Shaka is dead and you believe him. All he needed was a dose of power. Christ had to die so that the heavens would pass that power on to me. He thinks we've rejuvenated him, not just aesthetically, physiologically. Look at these men, for from now on, you'll pay them the respect due to kings. The great elephant wishes to see you and Muyazi immediately. giving a great deal of thought to the mistakes made by your king of kings. He obviously didn't have the foresight of a great leader, and that's why his people betrayed him, and why Mr. Abrahams wisely doesn't follow him. This man Christ had the multitudes in his own hands, Yet he was afraid to govern them. Hanging from a tree was easier. How did you get us into this one? Unintentionally, I assure you. Georgie and I mustn't make that mistake. We must have more courage. Perhaps a nation could be built where the whites and the Zulus would live together in harmony. A council of elders would be formed with the wisest men of each kingdom. And these men must be given eternal youth so that the heart of the nation would be immortal. Do you think this could be possible? Yes, nothing is impossible. If two kingdoms truly wish to live in harmony, you're starting to sound like Gulliver. I'm glad that you are so open-minded. That's why you shouldn't object if I asked you to join me in the campaign against the Ndwandwes. Nkosi, I must tell you that it is not King George's policy that his subjects should be involved in the internal affairs of other nations. The great elephant wishes to remind you, Febana, that we have an agreement. As my chieftain, you owe your allegiance to Shaga, as well as to Georgie. Or does Febana wish to go back on his word? Can a man serve two kings. Nothing is impossible if two kingdoms truly want to live in harmony. It's quite startling what he's been able to do with a Bible and a drop of Macassar oil. He's far too clever for us, Francis. 
It's time you realize that. <laughs> I fear that despite my flippancy over this whole affair, our situation was ridiculous. For our contribution to this battle would have to be superfluous. Sweetie was in past years one of Shaka's most formidable adversaries. And it was apparent from the ever-increasing movement of troops towards the capital that for Shaka he remained a dangerous enemy. Shaka had begun to realize the importance of the diary and that for him it could represent a form of immortality. And so the king would summon me to his hut and with apparent relish relate the violent episodes of his conflict with Sweetie, who soon would be our misfortune to confront. The enmity between Shaka and Zwiedi began years ago. In the north, Zwiedi was consolidating his paramountcy. He fought bloody battles, defeating all in his path, and ruthlessly crushing any resistance to his authority. I cannot believe all I'm told of this history, for so much of it once again hinges on witchcraft and tales of the supernatural. But recount it I will, for it's a story worth knowing. Zwiedi had achieved another major victory, and as armies returned victorious with their prisoners, Zwiedi and his feared mother, the witch doctor Ntumbazi, began to set their sights on Dingiswayo's empire in the south. And so, my son, Soshangana has returned victorious. All the northern tribes are now firmly under your control. And Dingiswayo controls the south. All we have to do now is step in and take it all. had her own plans for getting rid of Dingus Wild. Mzilikatsi, the prince of the newly defeated tribe, was to be part of her plan. What they'd not reckoned with was that Shaka was at that stage one of Dingus Wild's generals. The battle against the south would not be such a pushover as they expected. The entire region was now in turmoil. While Zwiedi and his demented witch doctor mother were ravaging the north, Shaka was in the south himself, carrying out a desperate war of attrition, using it to avenge himself on those who had victimized his family years before, while at the same time incorporating the subjugated tribes into Dingus Wild's paramountcy. It was a bloody episode in this part of Africa's extraordinary history. When I spoke of that nation, I wanted the name Teto to stand for peace, not total war. I wanted my armies to bring subjugation, not destruction. To subdue another tribe, you must strike it once and for all. Total war, total subjugation to the paramount king, and total destruction to anyone who raises even a whisper against him. Never leave an enemy behind, or it will rise again to fly at your throat. There's no other way. Yes, Shaka, there is. Faith. In what? The human being. Reason in each man's desire to believe in himself and his fellow man. Zwede of the Ndwandwas is preparing an attack. His army is as large, if not larger than yours. He has heard of our battle tactics. 
and has devised others which I fear just as effective. He has only one wish, Mama, to crush you and your paramounts into oblivion. And believe me, Baba, he won't do it with faith and reason. But if you say I've abused my freedom, I'll ask you to accept my resignation as commander of your regiments. Bayate! He knows we can't accept our survival. He's now dependent on his method. Omane. Shaga. Played your hand well. Now, what is it you want, Shaga? Complete control of the armed forces, without interference from the king or the council. But that would virtually give you complete control of the state. If Zwede defeats us, Ngomane, there will be no state. Winning the campaign against Ndwando's Confederacy is a matter of life and death for me, for you, for Tingiswayo. Oman, Zvide wants our blood, not our humanity. Do I have it? Yes, Shaga. You have it. Complete control. <laughs> I cannot bring myself to believe the hocus pocus surrounding the events which supposedly followed. And explanations more practical must be responsible. But so vivid is the myth recounted that once again I feel obliged to set it down. For if you can believe in the concept of power of thought, then undoubtedly this episode will make chilling reading. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
What have we here? I bring you news of Zvide. Take him out. Twenty-five thousand troops. Why are you telling me this? They killed my father. And you were close to him? Very. <laughs> what will your people do now, Jimmy Swan? How will their mind explain that which a mind cannot grasp? <laughs> <laughs> Z. 
Zelirazi. Then Dwanves, Queen Dombazi. Gomane, a mystery shaga. As usual, guards were posted at the gates of the crawl and at the entrance to the king's hut. They swear that no one was anywhere near the king last night, apart from his private maidservant. And I don't think a woman could have the strength. The gods are lying, Gomane. I doubt that, Shaga. They are your men. You trained them. No one could have slipped past them unnoticed. What are you saying, Gomane? That it didn't happen? I am merely suggesting that the way it happened may have nothing to do with human error. Nonsense. <clears throat> What we think, Shaga, is of little importance. What matters now is what the people are thinking. And what is their reaction, Goman? Fear. They won't even enter the hut to prepare the body for burial. It's true, Shaka. They feel that whoever had the power to kill Dingiswayo under the noses of our best guards has the power to put a curse on all our armies. Gomane, assemble the people, Gomane. We will not be defeated by witch doctor's illusions. Avenge his death. Wipe the Ndwandos from the face of the earth. Zide would like us to believe that witchcraft was involved in the death of Tingiswayo. Yet the truth lies elsewhere. Our beloved Paramount Chief met his death in treachery, not witchcraft. His royal guards and the maid servant have confessed to their betrayal. And for that crime, they'll suffer the maximum punishment. Impalement. Their bodies will hang over there as a testimony to all of what awaits those who betray us. Now, return to your training. And let there be no more talk of witchcraft. Nyangizwa. Security! Congratulations, Shaka. You won the day. Ha! Even with our new recruits, we still number 9,000. So it's 9 against 25. <laughs>
good is your magic now? Silly guys. Sharper had won the day. Zweedy's power had been broken and his territory gained, but Zweedy himself had escaped. Now, more than ever, Shaka's philosophy would prove correct. Never leave an enemy behind, or it will rise again to fly at your throat. Indeed, for once I wished with all my heart that Shaka had at that time been able to exercise that cruel philosophy. For the next day, we were to march out as Zulu warriors to face an even stronger Zwiedi. I prayed that God would be merciful. And that the 12th day of April, 1827, would not be the last entry in my diary. battlefield where whoever moves fast will fall into a trap. against them, alone. We will cover you, if and when you need assistance. Your aim will be to draw the enemy into his own trap. If you send us into that gully, alone, we're dead men. Why? Why are you doing this? Do you not have Christ in your heart, Febana? Mbuyazie told me that a man with Christ in his heart is stronger than all the regiments on earth. Did you say that? I'm afraid so. Is that not true? Yes. Of course it's true. Absolutely true. It's... It's true. But, but the meaning in... in Yaz's words, the meaning... must be taken differently. Differently? Yes, Nkosi. Mbuyazi did not mean real regiments, real regiments. Mbuyazi meant against them, alone. We will see who is the true king of kings, who is power. If your Christ wants to be the lord of the Zulus, he must deserve it. As I have.
Who taught you your scripture? Dr. Patrick Mulligan, Holy Trinity Church, Dublin. Oh. Well, blast him. Mr. Wilkins, Mordecai, you both get down here. Cover our advance from above. As soon as you see us move off, you give them everything you've got. You know, create as much confusion as you can. Could we not just perhaps surrender, sir? It has been done before you. Honorably, of course. Well, yes, Tim, I suppose we could. And as you say, it's been done before. But I have the slightest suspicion that these gentlemen don't take prisoners. All right, move on. Fighting them alone. Yes, it would appear so, Henry. He saved his bleeding eye. Where's his sense of appreciation? Ask Mr. Finn. Hasn't it become a matter of faith? Well, next time that the Emperor requires you to prove your faith, you would do well to refrain from mentioning the Colosseum. If there is a bleeding next time. Absurd strategy is this. Send down a handful of warriors. Let's see if their blood is the same color as ours. I They're moving to answer. Thompson, Tonino, Ridge, halfway up, move. Mr. Ogle, advance your cannon 40 paces. Rifle party, forward! Bechter, Hockley, Popham, Zack! Rifle party, halt! Prepare the path! Go, Wilkins. Hold your car. The Indians are too scared to advance. Your Steady. Steady. It would appear that Somerset was right, wouldn't it? It all comes down to blowing their heads off. Ah! <laughs> Reload! Reload! Send in more men. Keep firing! 
trying, man. I'm doing my best. Oh, I got one. Reload. Reload. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. Should we attack, Baba? Not yet, Mkoko. There'll be massacre. Was that your intention? Or do you still believe in their magic? Eddie. And in greater numbers. All right, Mr. Ogle, we may be in a packet of trouble. Now withdraw your cannon to our first position. Yes, sir. <laughs> Those who give wings to the great leopard are running like scat monkeys. I will punish! Hold back! Get back, you savages! No! Get back! Get back! Bastards! Thank you, sir! Singed their feathers for them. What sort of magic is this that can kill people at such long distances? Ready, sir! All regiments attack! We've got them on the run. We're winning! Give the order to attack. It's too late, the visitor. They've made the kill. We march in only as scavengers. I said attack. I said attack. Oh, yes, Mr. Ogle, quite amazing, isn't it? As I once had occasion to note, a man without scruples could very easily become a god in this country. Well, what did you expect me to do? Oh, I applaud the effectiveness of our ingenuity. What was worrying me just a little was how much you were enjoying it.
Kuzuğa ne dedin? Give it fire. We will not be your executioners, Baba. And those dead? In whose name did they fall? Were you my executioners or your own? And which king guided you in your killing? Was it I? Or your Christ? What is it, Ngoman? Your subjects await their king. Tell them the great elephant is indisposed. That may not be wise, Osi. Already, the people are thinking the white creatures deserve glory for Zwitter's ultimate defeat by being indisposed. You would confirm that. And what else are they thinking? They find it hard to understand the behavior of the great elephant. They are asking, how can the conqueror of nations 
be bewitched by a handful of jackals? My subjects have become very daring, Omar. Or could it be that it is your own question that echoes in their hearts? You have given them land, wealth, and the status of generals and chieftains. All I'm asking is what is the great elephant receiving in return for his generosity? The power of their knowledge. Then I can only hope that their knowledge is not a fabrication of lies or all that you've built will become theirs. Gomana sent you to persuade the king. No. I long only to remain here alone with my king. Let me love you, Shaka. Let me help you find love. For what purpose, my little one? Perhaps through that love you'll show me how to better rule my people. No, your people have nothing to do with it. I merely want to help take away the loneliness. A man who builds a road to the heavens must travel alone. getting quite involved with this country and its people. <laughs> <laughs> or dead. <laughs> I'm 
Pelamanta.